What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. Please excuse the dirty sink. Had a long night last night, but I want to talk really quickly. I've got a ton of these videos coming, these recipe videos. Um, so with that aside, you guys look forward to a bunch of recipe content here on the Patreon page. I know we're working our way towards the 10th of the month, but I've you know, I've recorded a ton of recipes. Was it last weekend? They just need to be edited and, and uploaded. But this is a really quick one. This is a really simple to make fermented fruit recipe. It cannot get much easier than this, guys. This is fermented banana. Looks kind of nasty, especially on the camera. But I can assure you, this is not gross. Not only does it taste good, but this is, this is where the power comes from, you guys. The beneficial bacteria in this. Your gut's going to love it. If you start drinking things like this, and you can get through the, oh, the taste is so gross. If you can keep drinking through it, that gross taste, your gut microbiome is going to terraform. The bacteria in this is going to help repopulate your intestines, your gut, with the right bacteria. And now your food cravings are going to yeah, going to change, excuse me. You're not gonna to wanna to eat as much. You see a lot of the reasons, or one of the primary reasons, if I could speak today, as to why we crave bad food is because we have an overabundance of the wrong bacteria in our system, folks. And that bacteria in your system contributes largely to your immunity, your immune system, your gut health, and especially, folks, your cognition, the health of your cognition. So I'm not gonna actually show you how I made this in this particular video, but I am gonna explain it. This is a mixture, you guys, of coconut, banana, papaya, just a bunch of tropical fruits. You can see pineapple chunks in there, mango chunks, you name it. This is just water and bananas and a little bit of sugar. So how did I make these? Well, guys, it is so simple. Get yourself a large mason jar like this. I can't remember how many ounces this is. Just get yourself a large mason jar. Next, get yourself probiotic. This is the one I like, and I take this every day. So I use this to start my probiotic drinks. Let me, I'll just explain that in a second because there's a little bit more to it than that. I take this every single day internally. This is two, or uh, excuse me, I take two of these. There's 30 servings in this. This is the PB-8. I also change it up sometimes. And I take this one right here, you guys. Natural factors, acidophil acidophilus and bifidus. 10 billion active cells, 90 capsules. These both need to be refri refrigerated once they're open. You can see the strains in the back here. I love this. This has a little bit of goat milk in it. Probiotics are amazing. They'll make you feel a little wonky for the first week of you taking them. You need to take them on an empty stomach with healthy or clean water. Let your gut be populated with the right bacteria. Then you'll start feeling amazing, you guys, and your food cravings will go away for all the junk and all the crap. This is the blend on the back of the PB-8. So, guys, I'm, how am I going to explain this? If you don't have one of these already, a fermented fruit drink or something like this, let me show you. This looks kind of nasty. This is fermented celery that I've had for about a month. And this is a little bit of leftover fermented cabbage, a little kimchi. And I'll show you what I have outside here in a minute. But what, why am I showing you these? These have been sitting so long and fermenting that the juice from this is a potent starter. So, I, you know, technically, if you, if you have... I'm really struggling to put this into words, you guys. I'm, I'm having... I normally don't have trouble like this on these videos, but I'm not going to stop and change this video and try to edit this out. Let me just focus here and try to get it out of my mouth, what I'm trying to say. You use the probiotics if you don't have some type of already established fermented drink or fermented food. See what I'm saying? 
So for instance, if you came over to my house, hypothetically, and I could give you a few ounces of this drink that's already established. This is like tons of bacteria. This thing has been colonized for over a month and a half. I could give you a couple ounces or even a couple tablespoons like this, put it in a glass jar and you could come home with that. And instead of using the probiotic pill to kickstart your own drink, you could dump the starter liquid that I gave you into the drink and just totally bypass the probiotic. See what I'm saying? But if you've never done this before and you want to start off farming beneficial bacteria, and that's really what you're doing, you're farming beneficial bacteria when you do this. If you've never done this before and you don't have access to a fermented fruit, uh, you know, food with a lot of beneficial bacteria or the right strains, simply buy one of these. These are like 19 bucks. I wouldn't buy them online. Go to Sprouts Farmer's Market. Find a place locally where you can buy a probiotic that's refrigerated and has been handled properly. Catch my drift? This has 14 billion active cultures. So let me just put these in the fridge so they don't go bad. So what did I do, you guys, to, to create this? I took two probiotic capsules of the PB8. Let me just show you one more time. I'm a little scatterbrained. I slept like shit. <laughs> I took this and mason jar. I put two of the probiotics, the PB8 probiotics in it. A serving, one single serving. I then put water in that jar about halfway. So I put, again, the probiotic, right, at the bottom. I put them in dry. There was no liquid in. And then I added coconut water. I added coconut water from a fresh coconut. You could just use regular water though, you guys. Even tap water will work. It's not the best, but it will work. I filled this mason jar halfway up with coconut water from a Thai baby coconut that I got from an Asian market. Then I just took fruit and filled it. I took the coconut meat I, from the Thai co or coconut. I took pineapple chunks. Pineapple skin, you can see all the bubbles going, you guys. Look at that ferment. Woo wee, this is effervescent. It's like a carbonated drink, it's delicious. I took all the scraps of a pineapple, the skin, you guys. I took all the skin, for the most part, off of a pineapple, and I shoved it in there. That is a drink called tapache. The Hispanics drink that, where they take pineapple and pineapple skin, all the crap that you cut off that you're not gonna eat, Put it in a fermented drink, close the lid and let it ferment. It tastes delicious. So I put a bunch of fruit in this. And then, I, and you know, again, I had half of this full of coconut water. When I put all the fruit chunks in, the water level rose, but I had, actually needed to add a little bit more. When you're fermenting fruit like this, you guys, with liquid, you want to leave a, like that much space between the lid. Ideally, you're going to leave about that much space where my thumb is, right? Because you want a, you want an adequate amount of space so that the, these jars don't explode. A lot of pressure is gonna build up in these and they can explode, you guys. So you need to make sure to burp these daily. You can see all the banana and coconut. The coconut has been totally broken down into like a powder. Um, so again, I don't mean to be repetitive, you guys, but two probiotic capsules. Added them dry, nothing else in this jar. I then proceeded to open up a coconut. I dumped the water in. I then added a bunch of scraps of fruit. Let me see if I can open this. Let me put this down really quick, you guys. One second. Can you guys hear this? Look at those bubbles. Look at how active these cultures are. The bacteria is totally just abundant and eating up all these sugars from the fruit. Ooh, this is like natural Sprite. This is such a good drink. I drink, I, I am so into beneficial bacteria and farming bacteria. You guys should see all of my other jars. I've got all sorts of mangosteen ferments, um, banana ferments, lemon ferments. You wanna create your own ferment kitchen. And we're gonna show you those videos here real soon. The videos I shot, was it last weekend? 
Uh, you guys know which ones I'm talking about because I made a video or a content update about these recipe videos here on the Patreon page. So you can do this with any fruit. It does not matter. You can even add vegetables in this if you want. If you, but the, um, we're going to focus on this being a fruit drink. This is delicious, and you know, I'll we'll make separate videos about kimchi. Um, but this is just a probiotic, uh, like a beneficial bacteria drink for your gut. And again, you guys, I don't. It's so simple. You just put a probiotic capsule in there, or if you don't even technically have to do that but I think it's a very wise idea. And then you're gonna, once you put your probiotic capsule in and you fill all your jar with all your fruit and your water, you just put the lid on and you let it sit for a few days. You'll know when it's done because it'll be hissing. It will be full of carbonation. So I like to let mine sit for about four to five days when I first create these. Once it gets established and the bacteria is fully colonized, you can start. You can drink half of the jar a day or more and just refill it with water and add some sugar. Close the lid and it will repopulate. So I really want to make this clear. If you've never done this before and you're making your first batch once you put your fruit, your water, and your probiotic and your sugar in and you close the lid, let it sit for a few days. The bacteria needs to colonize. It needs to establish itself. After a few days, you guys, it'll be done and you can start drinking it. And as you drink it, just replace the water and add some sugar. See what I'm saying? But if, if you're just making this for the first time... You can't just let it sit for a day. The bacteria and everything needs to colonize. You got to give it a few days, three to five days. Make sure to burp it at least four times a day. You need to make sure that the pressure is released from this. These are, ana uh, oh God, what is the, the phrase? These are anaerobic. They don't, the, this develops in a lack of oxygen, but the pressure will build up so much that you need to open them from time to time to let the pressure out. So what this recipe is for, is for your first starter. This is going to be your mothership, if you will. Look at all the carbonation. And now you guys, once this is established, you can drink as much of it as you want, add water to the top and add a tablespoon of sugar or more fruit. Boom. And after it's established of three to four days and you can start, and you start drinking this, Again, just replace the liquid that you drink, throw a little sugar in, or just throw some, your, your fruit, your fine, that'll be fine too. And in a day, it will be ready to drink. But you've gotta let it, you've gotta give it time for your mothership to, to establish, right? And that's why we have the probiotic, that we, or we, that's why we're putting the probiotic capsules in there, if you've never done this before. And now you can just open this, and you can add the liquid from this to any new batch of fermented food. And because the bacteria is so abundant in this, because you've let it, you've given it time to establish, you can just throw a little bit of liquid in this, from this in your other ferments and they'll take off like that. And they'll duplicate and replicate. And there is a sentience to this, you guys. It's very strange, but I've actually created a relationship with this, the bacteria in this. These are the, this is going in my system and it's going to rebuild myself. This is living food. This is not raw food per se. It's raw living food. This is teeming full of living microbes and bacteria and enzymes. Imagine that. So how did I do this one? Well, this one, I didn't even use a probiotic capsule. I took bananas, cut a bunch, cut, cut two bananas up. Put them in this little jar that I got from the dollar store. I put a pinch of salt in this and no sugar, just the sugar from the bananas. I literally just took a jar, put a pinch of salt in it, added water and bananas and covered it for three days. And now this is so strong. You can see the bubbles, you guys. Look at that. This is the great, these, mm, I love this stuff. 
my body thrives on it 100%. So I hope that recipe really makes, makes sense. Like for instance, if I wanted to make one of these with bananas and I didn't have probiotic capsules, you don't have to use the capsules. Again, I've said that before. Let's, which hypothetically, let's make a hypothetical or uh, let's make an example recipe right now. Say this jar is empty. All I have is a batch of bananas like that. Okay. Skin the bananas, take the skins off, throw them in the jar, add water up to here, add a pinch of salt. You can add even a little bit of sugar if you want, cover it, shake it really well, let it sit for three to four days, burp it two to three times a day. That means open the, the lid. In three to five days, you're gonna have this right here. You don't even need the probiotic capsules. I like the probiotic capsules though, you guys, because there's certain strains of bacteria I'm trying to farm. And the bacteria in this one, I, I love this particular formula, you guys. This makes me feel amazing. You'll find that, er, you'll, you'll, can't speak today. You'll find, excuse me, that you react differently, either beneficially or poorly to certain strains of bacteria. So I've gone through multiple bottles of probiotics over the years, trying to find the one that works best for me. This is one of them. This is one of the ones that I found worked great for me through my trial and error. So I added it to this because I want this to harbor the bacteria and strains of bacteria that are found in this. But you don't even need this, you guys. You really don't. You really don't. You can even ferment stuff like this if you wanted to. You guys hear that? That is the pressure in this jar. That's how alive this is. They'll hiss at you. So I drink stuff like this before I exercise for the beneficial sugars. Get this at the dollar store. You can ferment stuff like that. This is just mango concentrate. Not the greatest, but I'm on a budget saving money and it works. You can just throw water and sugar or water and fruit in this and cover it and you're done. Let it sit for a few days. I like to add a little bit of salt because the salt, the bacteria that starts as you're as the first few days of your fermentation, there is some die off of bad bacteria and the salt makes sure to keep those bad bacteria strains at bay. You don't have to do it though. Eventually, if you keep your lid on for long enough and you keep it anaerobic with no oxygen, all those bacteria will be converted. But I do, I like to add just like a fourth of a teaspoon of salt to my fruit ferments until it gets established. Then I never add salt again, but let's just say I had a pineapple and it's going bad and I don't want to eat it because it's all bruised up. Well, I could throw it away. I could green, I could put it in the green recycle or I could get smart and cut it up into little pieces, put it in a jar, fill it with water, add some salt and a probiotic capsule if you want, put the lid on, shake it so everything's, you know, shake, they're stirred up, let it sit for a few days on your counter. Once it's established, you can drink half or more of the fluid every day and then you just fill it back up. And when you fill it back up, you guys, make sure to add a little bit of sugar, right? I use white sugar. I do not use natural sugars, or how would I say this? I, I only used white refined sugar because it's had all of the crap refined out of it. Kind of like how white rice has all the crap refined out of it. You just want pure sugar. I do not like using turbinado sugar on these. I don't like using maple syrup, none of that crap, only white sugar. I find that it works the best and it also produces the best tasting end product. The sugars are going to get converted by the bacteria, remember, but they're, it's fuel for the bacteria. So let's just say this is finally established, right? You finally created this bacteria potion and you want to drink half of it. Well, dump it out. Look at all the carbonation, you guys. Dump it out into a cup, drink it, and replace whatever you drank with water, 
and a little bit of sugar. I like to add, if I'm gonna drink half of this, I add about a tablespoon of sugar. About an ounce or more, right? With this, <clears throat> you just need to get a hang of it. Uh, a hang of this, you guys. There's, uh, Jesus, I can't speak today. You just need to do it and, and practice. You'll get it. When I first started doing this, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I had all sorts of questions and I overthought the process. All you're doing is filling a jar with water and, and some form of sugar, right? And covering it and letting nature do its course. And when I mean sugar, I'm talking about fruit sugars. You're just putting fruit with water in a jar with a little bit of salt and you're covering it. Or, and ideally you're just gonna add, you can add the probiotic too. And you just sit, let it do its thing, and then you start drinking it. And as you drink it, just, you know, take the water out, put it in a cup, drink it, swish it in your mouth so your enzymes mix with it, and then just add water back and add anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of sugar. If you have a bunch of fruit in here, like I do, you don't need as much sugar. You can see the bananas have been eaten up a lot. Let's take this outside. I'll show you the kimchi. The kimchi is going to be a separate video and I already recorded that. It just needs to be edited. You can see banana, pineapple. You can see pineapple skin. Again, why are you throwing pineapple skin away? Make a ferment out of it, right? This jar is kind of cloudy because I've been handling it so much. And you always want to use lids like this, you guys. The metal lids will rust and it'll the rust, the iron will get into your, your ferment and it'll make it taste horrible. Buy BPA free um, lids for these mason jars. You can see coconut chunks, right? You can see pineapple in there. This is a very powerful brew. I even, after I watched Dr. Kassar's video about adding your own DNA, I had drops of my own blood in this even. And we'll talk about that in the near future. But this, you guys, I have this outside because I need to change this jar. These jars don't work. I would highly suggest not using jars like this unless they have a very strong clamp. Look at all of the carbonation. So I've had to put this one outside because the jar doesn't work very well. Like, in, in it, then the smell of this leaks out into the home and it just reeks, it stinks. So today I'm gonna take this and put it in a jar like this and then start eating it. I've already eaten most of it. So when I eat my meat at night, I always have um, a little bit of fermented cabbage. This is kimchi, there's carrots in this, there's all sorts of stuff. There's actually a ginseng root running through this, a Panax queen quifolia ginseng root. So you have your sweet and you have your savory. I personally like the fruit better. I can't say that. They all, they both have their own benefits. But I like that I can drink, you can also drink the fluid from this like natural V8, you can. So I can't, I like them both. This, if you're gonna be, people usually ferment fruit to drink the water. They'll also eat the fruit chunks, but oftentimes it's like you're making a natural kefir with, with coconut water or fruit, right? But you can also, when you make your kimchi, you can start drinking the fluid from this and it tastes better than V8. So you can have a savory drink. You can also have a sweetened drink. Most of the sugar from this is gonna be converted by the bacteria and eaten up as fuel. So you'll get like a faint aftertaste of the fruit chunks when you drink the fluid, but it's not like it's gonna be some sugary, super sugary drink, right? It's just not. So I hope that makes sense. I think I've repeated the recipe a hundred times. I'll also put a uh, description in the... I'll write up the recipe in the notes of this video here on the Patreon page. But today, you guys, I'm going to run oranges and pineapple through the TriBest Z-Star hand crank wheatgrass juicer. Excellent juicer, hand powered, which I prefer. I'm not into electric juicers anymore for the most part because it's just another thing that'll break. And on top of that, you guys, this is the type of stuff that will keep uh, working if the grid were to ever go down. This is just an auger style hand crank juicer. It bolts to the counter. See that? It's got a auger. You put the fruit through this and you hand crank it. It needs to be lubricated. That's why it's making noise. 
and it pushes or squeezes stuff through this filter and it comes out of that hole. So I'm gonna take a bunch of fruit and juice it, or not a bunch, I'm gonna take pineapple and oranges, tiger oranges, and I'm gonna make juice and then I'm just gonna put it in a jar like this up to here, put some salt in and cover it. I'll also take two tablespoons of liquid from this fully established mother colony and put it in the jar, right? And then cover it for a few days and boom, I have another ferment. It's very, very simple, you guys. It cannot be it like, in one thing I would suggest is don't overthink it. Don't get into this idea that if you miss a step, it's gonna fuck everything up. This is an intuitive art. All you've got to do is make your first batch and, and fully grasp how it works through the actual making of that, and you'll be good. You will be 100% good, you guys. So I also have right here, this is fermented, this is uh, kefir, homemade kefir, which is a fermented milk drink. Some people might think that sounds, or looks gross and even sounds gross, but I don't really give a fuck. This is actually really good. And you wanna know how easy it is to make kefir? And this is not my refrigerator, folks. So please don't judge when you see all this bullshit that people eat. This is a shared community refrigerator. Ton of garbage in this. Makes me sick. Excuse me. Um, what was I looking for? So you can just go to the store, you guys, right? And I'll, sh I'll do a video on this so I you can see exactly how you do it. Just take two tablespoons of kefir, put it in a mason jar, fill the rest up with whole milk, and cover it and let it sit for a couple days. I let mine sit in a dark cabinet and I cover it. People will tell you, oh, use a cheesecloth. It needs to breathe. No, no, you want to cover it. It will work much better and it gets sour and it's full of beneficial bacteria. So guys, I don't want to make this one too long. Use whatever fruit you want. You like mangosteens? Use mangosteens. I also have a sweetened lemonade ferment. So let's just say this is empty. I want to make a lemon ferment. I got a bunch of lemons. Two capsules of the PB8 probiotic. Add water. Halfway. Put a ton of lemon juice in it. Add a tablespoon of sugar. And then you could even put the whole lemon rinds in whole. Cover it. Let it sit for a few days. Boom! But what this recipe is for is your first starter. What do I mean by that? You want to have an established probiotic bacteria colony and that's going to take four to five days for it to establish and then after that this will stay good indefinitely and it'll just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger so once you have one of these mother colonies then anytime you want to make another ferment you just take another a couple tablespoons out of this and put it in your jar it's that simple and you can use the fruit ferment liquid to make kimchi also. You can add vegetables, it's really open-ended and this is a beautiful, very beneficial art, you guys. Start fermenting your food, it's gonna make you feel amazing. And on top of that, if you've been looking for a probiotic to take and you haven't had success, well, these are the two I recommend. PB8 probiotic, eight strains of beneficial bacteria, 14 billion active cultures, supports digestive health, no milk, gluten, or soy. And that is the panel of bacteria on the back. Okay. I also really love this one. Acidophilus and bifidus. This is the bacteria on the back. I use this when I make kefir. When I make my fruit ferment, I use this. But I also take two of these every single day around 6, a, uh, 6 p.m. on an empty stomach with about 12 ounces of water. You have food cravings? Probably because you have bad bacteria in your gut. Repopulate that with the right bacteria. And these might work for you, they might not. You gotta, you know, you gotta practice, or not practice, what am I saying? You gotta experiment, right? There are strains of there's probiotic strains that I've bought in the past that they did nothing but make me feel cloudy and, and like shit, right? And that's something that you might find when you first start. 
It's very common when you first start taking a probiotic a capsule, it's very common to have brain fog. It's very common to feel a little loopy. It's more often than not from die off. Bacteria competes with other bacteria. And up until this point, if you've never taken a probiotic before, your body's bacteria in your system has been the byproduct of what you've eaten for the last however many years. So when you put probiotics in your system, it can, the competition for bacteria or them competing with one another in your intestines, etc., it can make you feel like shit for a little while. But if you get through it, it usually takes about a week, a few days to a week, a uh, week, depending on how clean and active you are. And I mean, clean internally, your diet. Once you get through it, you're going to feel amazing. And once you have fully colonized the right bacteria in your system, uh, you're, you're not going to have the same food cravings that you used to have. In fact, you'll probably find that you're craving things that you didn't crave prior, like a lot of raw food, uh, you know, the right meats, organ meats, your body will tell you what it needs as long as you have the right bacteria in your system. These are your allies, you guys. Farm beneficial bacteria. I got that quote from Dr. Kassar. That's true. It's what you're doing. You're farming bacteria. Get a bunch of jars. Get active. I'm going to wrap this one up. Peace be with you.